In this next video, I'm going to talk you through how you can literally save hours of time using the best Excel shortcut keys for both Windows and Mac. So if you're ready, throw away your mouse and let's get started. Our first six tips are going to be navigating around the Excel screen. I'm going to be calling out the window shortcut, but there's also the Mac shortcut available on the screen. So we have a table here on the left. So if I want to, if I want to select all the data within that table, I'm just going to choose control and A. If I go to the top left of this table, and if I want to just whiz across to the right hand side of the screen, I could use control right arrow. And then if I want to go to the bottom right, I just use control and down arrow back to the left. It's control and left arrow and then back to where we started control and off arrow. If I want to select that region in its entirety, as I whiz across the screen, I can just use control shift and then the arrow where I want to go. So control shift and right or control shift and down and that selects the whole region. If I want to select an entire column, I'll just choose control and spacebar. And if I want to choose an entire row, I'll use shift and spacebar. And then finally, if I just want to go to a specific cell on the worksheet, I can just use Control and G and then just literally specify which cell I want to go to. So say A100 and hit return and that will bring me to that cell. So our next shortcut tips are all around working with data. So here on the left here, we have a table and we can see that the column widths on all of the columns is not correct. So we could manually go in and try and sort those out. But if there was quite a lot of columns, we might want to automate that a little bit. So what we're going to do is if we select the whole table, so control and A, and then to auto fit the columns, we're going to choose Alt H O I in Mac. That's Command Shift and C. We also have a couple of rows down below here that you can see that we need to auto fit as well. So to do that in Windows, that's Alt H O A. And on Mac, it is Command Shift and OR. So once we've got our table with our rows and our columns sorted, then we're going to Control Shift and L, and that will put on our filters. Again, this is just a toggle, so we can put them on and off by just choosing Control Shift and L. Next, we'll want to convert this into a table that Excel can read. So if I Control and T and then just hit OK to that, that converts it into a table. There's a couple of benefits when you're working with tables in Excel. It's more structured data and you get automatic updates of formulae. Next tip down. So if we want to add a row into our table, we're going to use Control Shift and plus. And then if we want to remove that row, we'll just use Control and minus. If we want to hide a column, firstly, we'll just select it and then we'll hit Control and zero to hide that. And if we want to hide a row, we'll just select a full row and then we'll Control and nine to hide that. If we want to highlight any rows or columns that are hidden in a data set, firstly, we can just Control and A to select the whole data set and then Alt and semicolon will just give us a line of where we can see that rows and columns are hidden. And if we double click on the grid just outside, that will then unhide those rows and columns. Like so. If we want to add a new line to an existing cell, we'll just select that cell, make sure that we're editing in it, and then we'll just hit Alt and Enter type in what, what we want and then just hit return. If we want to add from an existing list to the bottom of our table, we can just select alt and down arrow and then that selects from the previous options that we had previously. And then finally, if we want to undo any actions, we can just hit control and Z. And if we want to redo them, we just hit control and Y. Our next six shortcuts are all around formulae. So very simply, some that everybody will know if we want to copy something, we can just hit Control and C. And then if we want to paste that, we'll just hit Control and V. But if we want to paste special the values, so if I go and copy a formula, paste that over, I want to actually paste in the value of that. So the 5752. So instead of doing that on Windows, it's Control Alt V V. And then on Mac, it's Control Command V and then V and hit return. And you can see then it just pastes across special the values in that. If we want to copy across from the right, we can just hit control and right. 
and if we want to copy down we'll just hit Control and D and then finally if we want to sum the end of a column so we want to sum the end of the sales here we can just choose Alt and Plus and that will sum that we can also use Alt Plus to simultaneously sum all of the columns and all of the rows in this table at the same time and all we need to do is just select the whole range and then if we alt and plus and that will just automatically populate them all in our next five tips are all around formatting data so in the table here if i wanted to change the format of a particular cell i can just use Control and one that will bring up this format cells dialog box but I can also select all of my sales and profit. And if I wanted to change the format of that to dollars, control, shift and four, and that'll format that. I can also change the format of the percentage by just hitting control, shift, and then five to make that into a percentage. I can select individual cells and just hit control and B if I want to bold those. And I can also select Control and I to make anything into italics. Next shortcut is called Flash Fill. Let's see how it works. So if I have a name here, which is a surname and then a first name, but I want to rearrange it and have the first name and then the surname. So if I do the first cell and then if I control and down arrow to select the region that I want to flash fill, and then if I just control and E, and you can see what Excel does is it detects a pattern and then it automatically fills that in. And we can do that with also merging cells. So here I have two different cells with a name and then a surname. I've put in what I want the results to be. So concatenating both the John and Brown. And if I select that range and then just hit Control and E, it will automatically populate that based on the pattern. So our bonus shortcut is using shortcuts on the quick access toolbar. Now the quick access toolbar is just this menu above the ribbon in Excel. And if I go to the right hand side of this, you see I get the option to customize quick access toolbar. So if I select that, then go down through my options down to more commands. This gives you the option to include any of the functions within Excel into your quick access toolbar. And all you need to do is select them and then just hit this add button. I've already selected four or five that I'm gonna use. So I'm just gonna select okay. Now the beauty of using the quick access toolbar is that if we select the table here and I want to put in headers, all I need to do is just select alt. It'll then give me these options up the top and you can see across my quick access toolbar, it'll just be numbered one to five. So in this particular instance, then I want to select three and then I'm just going to select what color I want my header to be in. I'm going to select alt again. I'm going to change the font. So this time I'm going to select four and I'm going to select white. And then finally, down the bottom of my table here, I want to put some grid lines on that. So I'm going to select Alt again, and this time I'm gonna choose five and I'm gonna go top and bottom. So you can see using the quick access toolbar is an even quicker way. So it's a real accelerated shortcut key. You have a quick access toolbar within Mac, but unfortunately you can't use shortcut keys from it. Earlier on, I had some shortcut keys for auto correcting the width of both rows and columns. Now the Alt shortcut function is not available for Mac, so I had to set them up separately. So let me just show you how you can do that. So if you go to the top of your ribbon and go to Tools, Customize Keyboard, then you just need to know which tab your shortcut is on. So in this instance, it was the Home tab. And then if I searched in here for Auto and Auto Fit Selection, you can see then I specified that I wanted that to be command plus shift plus C. So if you want to specify for that, you can put in your own shortcut key, add that, and then hit okay. There's quite a lot of shortcuts there and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So give it a little bit of practice and you will notice that your productivity will skyrocket. If you like those tips and you want to see more, please consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next video.